Amen. I want to continue this morning uh, on our summer series, Jams in June and July. So far, the first two tracks, first week, track one was the Mary J. Blige song, Real Love. Then last week, we looked at Fantasia's I Made It. And this morning for track three, I want to look at Beyonce's Daddy's Lessons. Amen. Beyonce's Daddy's Lessons. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Really want to look at starting at that sixth verse that 6th and 7th verse. Reverend Howard's already read 1 through 7, but I just want to focus on that 6th and 7th verse of Deuteronomy, the 6th chapter. Therein reads these words, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts, Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. He says, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk around along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up, impress them on your children. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Daddy lessons. The album uh, Lemonade was Beyonce's sixth solo album. It, it made its debut, and in the first week, it sold almost 650,000 copies. Earned Beyonce her sixth consecutive number one album. Lemonade was nominated for nine Grammy Awards at the 59th Annual Grammy Awards. It received widespread acclaim from music critics. It has also been called Beyonce's most critically acclaimed album to date. The album was boosted by Singles like Formation, Hold Up, Freedom, and Sorry. Kind of thrown into the album was a song with a country feel, a song called Daddy Lessons. Beyonce wrote the song with songwriters Winter Gordon and Kevin Cossum. Many believe that she was writing about her father, Matthew Knowles. Matthew Knowles is the one who pushed Beyonce to become a singer and a dancer and what she eventually became. She recounts how he taught her to be strong and to always stand up for herself, making her a soldier. She says these words into the song, in the song, came into this world, daddy's little girl, and daddy made a soldier out of me. Oh, 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 daddy made me dance. And daddy held my hand. She said daddy liked whiskey with his teeth. 
We rode motorcycles, blackjack, classic vinyl. Tough girl is what I had to be. He said, take care of your mother. Watch out for your sister. And oh, that's when he gave to me. With his gun, with his head held high, he told me not to cry. Oh, my daddy said, shoot. Oh, my daddy said, shoot. With his right hand on his rifle, he swore it on the Bible. My daddy said, shoot. Oh, my daddy said, shoot. He held in his arms, and he taught me to be strong. He told me when he's gone, here's what you do. When trouble comes to town and men like to come around, my daddy said, shoot. <laughs> oh, my daddy said, shoot. She, she talks of the lessons that her father, her daddy, taught her. Sometimes they were difficult lessons. Sometimes they were harsh and they were hard to hear, but they were important lessons for life. And on this Father's Day, I believe it's every daddy, it's every father's responsibility to teach important lessons. Sometimes they don't want to hear it. Sometimes it comes out hard. Sometimes it's hard to hear. But if your sons and your daughters are going to end up being the young men and women that God wants them to be, you as a father got to teach them daddy lessons. And listen, this is not a worldly principle. This is a biblical principle. Because even in our text this morning, in that sixth chapter uh, of Deuteronomy, Moses is preparing the people to cross over into the promised land. He starts at that verse, verse, he says, these are the commands, the decrees, the laws, the Lord God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. He said, listen, this is why it's important. It's important for your children's children, children. Somebody missed it. He didn't say it's just important for you. He said it's important for your children and that children after them and that children after them that they may fear the Lord your God. He says, hear it. You, you, you got to hear what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. But he says something in that seventh verse. He, he says, impress these things on your children. He, he, he says, talk about it when you sit at home. He says, you need to be teaching lessons when you're sitting at home. But not just when you're sick at home. He, he said, when you're walking along the road, you ought to be teaching lessons. When, when you're lying down, teach lessons. When, when you get up, teach lessons. He said, listen, as long as they are in your house, uh, you need to be teaching them lessons because one of these old days, they won't be with you anymore. One of these days, they're going to have to go out on their own. And when they go out, you want to make sure that you have trained them. That's why the Bible says train a child in the way they should go so that when they're, they won't depart from it. You, you got to start now though. You, you got to teach them the lessons that they need to hear so that they will not. Because listen, don't you know Satan is on the prowl. Satan is trying to tear your children down. He's trying to destroy their lives. And fathers, you have a responsibility. As their protector. You have a responsibility as their God, as the leader of your family to make sure you teach them these important lessons. And what's sad is that there are so many homes today 
And that's why, to me, this is not just for fathers. This is for grandfathers. This is for uncles. This is for neighbors. Listen, it may be a little boy on your street who doesn't have anybody and who, who doesn't have a father figure in his life. And, and he needs somebody to care about him enough. I wish I had somebody here. He, he needs somebody to care about him enough to teach him the things that he needs to learn uh, so that when he gets out, because don't you know this whole world that we live uh, is no friend? I wish I had somebody here. This world that we live in is no friend to grace, truth, or mercy. And if they're not taught it in the home, it's going to be hard for them. That's why George Herbert says this. He says, one father is more important than a hundred schoolmasters. I need to say that again. One father is more important than a hundred schoolmasters because, listen, nobody can teach them what daddy can. And so, there are some important, there are many actually daddy lessons. But this morning, I just want to deal with four. Four quick, that, that, that. Remember, remember what Moses says in the text. It needs to be in their heart. Impress it. You got to, you got to, I thank God for my late grandfather. That doesn't a week go by that I don't think about him. Because I remember the stuff, and it's funny, because now I find myself repeating the stuff he told me to my own son, your children's children's. I find myself repeating stuff that I thought he was crazy for saying. I wish I had somebody who's been there. Stuff, I, I wonder why he keep telling me that. I wonder. I never forget. So, so there are four, 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 four daddy lessons I think are important for fathers to teach their children. Number one, the first, the first daddy lesson that is important is you need to teach them the importance of love. Fathers need to teach their sons and their daughters the importance of love. You need to impress it upon their hearts. You, you need to talk about it daily. You need to let them know the importance of love. L love is a core principle of the Christian faith. From Genesis to Revelation, love is intertwined through every book of the Bible. And, and fathers have a responsibility to show their children what love is. Don't you know the very purpose of our creation was to show that we could be loved by our creator? And love is the very reason why Jesus came and died for God. So love the world that he gave his only begotten son. It was all because of love. Greater love has no one than to this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You, you, you got to teach them and train them the importance of love. We, we must be willing to be willing instrument. And I don't, I don't want to hear and see. We, we, we fathers, men, we, we get this idea that we've got to be emotionless and, and we've got to show our children. No, listen, you remember Jesus loved his good friend Lazarus so much that when he thought about that he had been dead for a few days, he got to his grave and the Bible says he wept. If Jesus can cry tears, I wish I had a witness here. Don't ever think you are so big and so bad that you can't show your children love. We, 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 we've got to show them how we got to teach them about love, how to practice love in their lives. And listen, this is Agape love, phileo love, brotherly love, and even you got to teach them about eros love. Because if you don't teach them about it, they're going to go looking for love in all the wrong places. 
audiences. They're going to go looking for love in all the wrong people. They will think that love is all about him being 6'2", dark, and handsome. But that ain't what love is all about. Because don't you know the devil can shape something up to look good and it'll be bad for So many of our young people today, because they have never been loved themselves, because they have never been taught what love is, they are angry. I mean, all you got to do is be around them for a little yeah. while. Yeah. They are angry and they are mad at the world and they don't know why. And it's because nobody ever cared about them enough to show them what love and so their hearts and, and listen and when you see it and it's so obvious uh, it tears you up because listen I was reading a story the other day about uh, a 17 or 18 young man who literally I think it may have been in Memphis or somewhere like that shot a young mother in front of her three children what makes you so void of caring about anybody or anything that you will literally take somebody else's life, not only just take their life, uh, but to take their life in front of, I mean, not talking about big, three little children. And you shoot that mother dead. But when you don't have love in you, and you have never been taught the importance of love, you are going to do evil. I wish I had somebody here. Because you see, we got to teach them what 1 Corinthians 13 says, starting at that fourth verse. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Here's your cue to shout right here. I love that eighth verse. It says, love never, never fail. Don't you know love will always work when nothing else will work? Listen, sometimes uh, you're not going to ever agree with your children. Uh, sometimes you never don't go understand but don't you know it doesn't cost you anything uh, to wrap your arms around them uh, and tell them I love you uncon I love you unconditionally may not like what you do and I don't understand I don't I listen ain't nothing my child can do that's going to make me completely give up on them. I may not like it. I may disagree with it. But I'm still going to let them know, listen, I love you unconditionally because how am I going to look at them in their mess and not love them when God looked at me in my mess? For my Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. If my Father in heaven can love me in spite of me, surely you can show them what love is. First daddy lesson that I think is important is we must teach our children the importance of love. But second of all, we must teach our children and impress it upon them, the text says, the importance of purpose. The importance of purpose. Many people today are living aimless lives. They are literally living without purpose. You see them walking around, they just here to be here. No direction, no guidance, don't know where they're going or what they're doing. And that's not biblical. Because 138 Psalms says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. You remember when the potter was working on the clay, he wasn't just 
doing any old thing, he had something in mind. Now, even though the clay messed up and the potter had to start over again, he still has something in mind. Don't you know each and every person in here this morning, God has a purpose for your life? You may not know what it is. You may not understand it. But please believe God has a purpose for you. And God has a purpose for your sons and your daughters. And it is our job whether we're talking fathers or mothers to help our children understand what their purpose is in life because you don't see it's easy for satan to get him off the track it's easy for satan to get him going in the wrong direction that's why listen i don't understand i said this last sunday while they're in your house, while they're on your dime, coming to church ought not be an option. I wish I had somebody here who knows and used to live in a day that, listen, while you are in my house, and while you, un, I wish that, while I'm still paying the bills and while I'm still putting money in your pocket, no, it's not if you get up on Sunday morning, you will get up on Sunday morning, you will come to, I wish I had somebody here. You got to teach them the importance of reading their Bibles and, and praying because that will help them understand what their purpose is. It wasn't my father, but it was my mother. This is how important purpose is. I had been planning to go to college to play football. It's all I had been worked on all my life. Finally, was getting ready. Schools were looking at me. Senior in high school, going to college, fulfilling a dream to play football. And in the quarterfinals of the state playoffs, in the Houston Astrodome, I tore up my knee. It wasn't like today when, you know, you could just have surgery and five days later they got you back on the field. I was effectively done. I was in limbo. I didn't know what I want, was going to do because my whole mindset had been football. Finally, my mother said, listen, uh, you, you need to make a choice. What you going to do? I kept saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Finally, one day she came in the house. She said, come here. Let me talk to you. She said, you got 20 minutes <laughs> to fill out this application. She's been longtime friends with Dr. Joe Samuel Ratliff at the Brentwood Church in Houston. She said he is, even though the deadline has passed, uh, Dr. Ratliff is going to Atlanta this weekend, and he says if you fill out the application, he'll take it and walk it through. She says, you got 20 minutes. I filled out the application. Dr. Ratliff walked it through. He brought it back on Monday and I was a student going to Morehouse College in the fall. I didn't understand why God would have me from football to a school that's known for producing preachers. I wish I had somebody here. I didn't understand what God was doing. Several weeks later, my mother had gone to high school with Oscar Roan, who, who was a does crusades all over the country. Oscar was in the Houston area and, and we went to go see him and my mother was telling him about my knee problems and Oscar got out a bottle of oil and he anointed my knee. Now for years, I thought Oscar had anointed my knee. I wish I had somebody here <laughs> to get better. Several years ago, I was preaching revival uh, at the Royal Baptist Church in Charleston, South Carolina, and I was sitting there, and in that revival, they had put a table in the pulpit. 
the pastor said, listen, if you want to bring your bottles of oil, we're going to pray over them. And at the end of the week, you can take them back home. I was sitting there in the pulpit of the Royal Baptist Church in Charleston, South Carolina, and God showed me Oscar wasn't anointing your knee for football. Oscar was anointing you to preach God's word. I wish I had somebody here. I didn't understand it then. You got to guide them. They may not understand it. They may not like it. But you need to keep them on the path. So that they can fulfill that purpose. So that they can become what it is that God. I couldn't see it then. But thank God I had a parent who could. Mothers, fathers, on this Father's Day. Make sure your children. Listen, don't let them doubt themselves. Tell them they could do anything. You tell them you are more than conquerors. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. I don't, I don't care what that teacher says at that school. I don't care what anybody else says. You my child. And I know God has a purpose for your life. I, I don't care about them saying you got, you know, because they'll be quick to say, oh, he got a uh, emotional problem. No, he ain't got no emotional problem. Remember, they, they told my mother, I think he needs to be on some medicine, you know. He's kind of hyperactive in class. <laughs> he said, I got his medicine. <laughs> the next time. He acts a fool. Y'all call me. And one day I was just there clowning and looked up. Y'all, y'all know how it goes. You made me leave my job. <laughs> Don't you know I kill you? <laughs> I brought you in this world, I'll take you out. You got to help them understand what that purpose is. Daddy lessons. The importance of love. The importance of purpose. The third lad, daddy lesson is the importance of wisdom, the importance of wisdom, to teach them what it means to be wise. The Bible emphasizes that one of the greatest qualities we can possess is wisdom. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that one may desire cannot be compared with her, Proverbs 8 says. Proverbs 16 says, how much better to get wisdom than gold. Now, it's hard in this world that we live in today where everything is cars, cash, clothes, and creature comforts. It's hard for them to understand wisdom. But listen, you got to let them understand and don't, don't be so quick and, and as a father, listen, I deal with you, I, 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 my father was not always around growing up. And so I made up in my mind that when I had children, I'm going to be the best father that there ever was. And so probably there are times when I overdo it. Amen. But sometimes the problem is, and we want our children to have the stuff we didn't have, and we want them to be blessed, but sometimes we can do too much. I wish I had a witness here to where they don't understand the difference between being wise and being a fool. Why is it so important for them? Because wisdom helps us to understand the difference between what is right and what is wrong in God's sight. Wisdom is important because wise decisions often prevent heartache. Now listen, 
they are going to have some heartaches. Some girl is going to break. Some boy is going to break your daughter's heart. Some, some, some coach is going to break your son's heart. Some teacher is good. But you got to make sure that they eliminate or they lessen those heartaches by making wise decisions. You, you, you see, wise decisions will keep the frogs away. Somebody will catch it when you get home. Oh, you got your prince now. But how many frogs did you have to kiss? Oh, Y'all didn't get it over there. Let me talk over here. You got your prince now. But how many frogs did you have to kiss? Wisdom. It, it'll lessen the frogs. And listen, this is the thing. You will never, ever be able to keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. It's I know you want to do it. I know you try to do it, but it is not possible. But what you do as you teach them, remember, you impress it upon their heart. Instead of making foolish decisions, it will make them make wise decisions. Uh, they will begin. And see, that's why I got to go back. That's why it's important uh, that you train them uh, and teach them to read the word of God, uh, to stay on their knees and pray, uh, to go to church and worship, uh, because that will help their decision-making process. Oh, thank God for the lessons learned. May not have liked them, and, and, and can we be honest? Can we be honest this morning? How, how many of us just wish we had been a little wiser? We had been a little less foolish. And so since I made the mistake, since I messed up, I have an opportunity now. We have an opportunity now to share. And, and so what we've got to do uh, is we've got to stop acting uh, like we always been holy. we always been perfect. Uh, we want our children to think we are, you know, the greatest. No, listen, thank God for grace. Be honest with them. Tell them, listen, I'm just telling you what I'm telling you because I don't want you to make the same mistakes I made. I don't want you to do the same thing I did. And that's why I'm teaching. And I know sometimes you say daddy's being hard. I know sometimes you're saying daddy doesn't want me to do this. No, I just want you to be wise. Daddy lessons. Teach them the importance of love. Teach them the importance of purpose. Teach them the importance of wisdom. Finally, the last daddy lesson this morning is teach them the importance of faith. Teach them the importance of faith. Life can be hard and confusing. I know we like to walk around as Christians acting like we ain't got no problems. We're not going through anything, but you do know that ain't real. You may have us church folk food, but Jesus said in this life you will have some tribulation. All of us is going through something. I wish I had a witness here. And if you're not, you just came out of something or you're headed to something. And so it's important that you let your children know life won't always be easy. 
Life is not always going to go the way you want it to go. You are going to have some mountains uh, like the choir talked about. But the good news is uh, even when the mountains come, if you just have faith, if you just keep the faith, anybody here know with the faith the size of a mustard seed? You can move mountains, and, 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 and our young people, see, our young people, they have questions. They, they want to know things. And, and you got to be able to tell them, and you got to be able to show them that, listen, I may not have all the answers for life. I may not be able to give you everything I want to give you. But one thing I can give you, and one thing I can show you, is faith. I thank God for the faith of my grandfather. I thank God for the faith of my mother and my grandmother who, who weren't able to give me everything I wanted, but, but thank God they were able to walk by faith and not by sight. And, and when they didn't have everything, and I wish I had somebody here who's been there. Listen, you may be blessed now. You may have it all now, but anybody here know it ain't always been like that. You didn't always grow up in the city. You didn't always have much. But thank God, what grandmama and granddaddy didn't have, they had faith. Thank God that they were able to share with you what it meant to live your life by the word of God. And that's why your testimony is trust in the Lord. With all thy heart, lean not upon thy on understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path that's why you live by mark 9 that says all things are possible for who believes i wish i had somebody here that's why mark 11 says therefore i say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray if you believe that you receive them you shall have them and and James 1 and 6 says, but let him ask in faith and, and he will answer your call. I thank God that my grandfather taught me the word of God. I wish I had somebody here. He taught me I could do all things uh, through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, he taught me that whatever you need, if you just trust and believe in him. Uh, is there anybody here uh, who had taught those lessons of faith uh, and you may not have have, uh, all of the creature comforts you, you may not have the cash uh, and the cars and the clothes uh, but thank God uh, you got some Christ in you I wish I had somebody thank God they told you about a man named Jesus uh, I remember my grandfather who didn't have a whole lot of education uh, he said you need to know about Jesus uh, I wish I had somebody here uh, he said you need to know about a man uh, who died on the under's cross I went in the grave and stayed all night Friday and all day Saturday, but bright early. I wish I had one or two more witnesses here. I said bright early, bright early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And because he lives, I'm going to tell everywhere I go. Because he lives, I'm going to share the lessons I learned. Because he lives. Because he lives everywhere I go. Not just my children. Because see, this is not just about my children, but the text says, our children's children's children. Listen, the generations matter. The future matters. What lessons are you going to leave? You won't always be here. You won't always be here. And when you're gone, well, what do you want your children to remember about you? What do you want your children to remember about you, Daddy? You may have messed up even leading up to today. But right here and right now is your opportunity to turn it around. You may have been a father who's been lacking. But you have the opportunity right now to turn it around. Some son who had a bad example of a father. 
needs to hear this message today. Some young man who's preparing to be a father for the first time. Listen, you don't know life until you have your children of your own. Until you are responsible for your own children. Oh, but thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Who, if you just give your life to him, if you just trust and believe in him, he has promised. And he will hear. He'll guide you. Listen, I remember when, when I became a father for the first time, I looked at that little girl and said, Lord, what have you done? Lord, what have you done? Me, a father, but there's no greater joy. Oh, when you see him grow up and you see him loving others, you see him walking in that purpose, you see him doing the things that you taught them to do, and you see it come to fruition. All you can do is say, Thank you, Jesus. I'll never forget that Sunday that I rededicated my life and announced my call to preach. I walked down the aisle there at the Little Grove Church and people began to shout and my mother was sitting there and she didn't know what it was. But when I walked past her, all she could do was say, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes all you can do is pray for your children. Sometimes all you can do is say, Lord, I've done my part. I've done all I can do. Now, I've taught them the lessons that they need to learn. I taught them what love is. I've taught them their purpose. I taught them to be wise. I taught them about faith. Lord, now they're in your hands. Do, Lord, what it is that you need to do. And I don't know about you, but I know he'll do it. Anybody here know he'll do it? He'll do it. He'll, he'll save your child. He'll deliver your child. He'll watch over your child. If you just trust in him. We pray that you've been blessed by today's message. Please join us again next week for another powerful word from God. For prayer requests or to order a copy of today's program, write to us at... Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. That's Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. You can also visit us on the web at www.mountpleasantbaptist.org. When ordering, please be sure to include the message number. Until we meet again, remember... God's Word, our mission.